Hi, I'm Jacob Bernardo, and today's breaking news is that there was a dead body found at Gentry Life Science Lab in a college university. Some reports have been saying that she has died to do, due to falling down and hitting her head. Another report has said that she was murdered by an anonymous person. A suspect has yet to be found. Here we have Haley de Guzman at the crime scene. Take it away, Haley. Thank you, Jacob. I'm here now with Officer Aranda, Miss Nala, and Mr. Tyson online, and they will be telling us any information about what's been happening inside Gentry Life Science Lab and some information about the scene. So tell us what's been going on inside of that room. Well, we can see that someone died inside the room and we received a call from Taylor Diaz, who is a student in this university and also a friend of the victim, which is Ana Garcia. Ana Garcia is 20 years old and she was known to be working at Gentry Life Science Lab. Well, um, what are some items you guys found at the crime scene? Well, me and my investigating team, there were eight things that we found at the crime scene. A body, a flask, blood on the floor, fly eggs, a phone, blood on the table, a note inside Anna's pocket, and some hairs. After we found these things, we immediately measured the distance of the items from the doors that we can infer, or it could give us some hypothesis of, of what actually happened. Wow, okay, with all that information, did you guys find any evidence on that item? Well, the phone that is found right next to her, we tried to open her phone and we found five suspects, which are Eric Benmont, Anna's boyfriend, Taylor Diaz, Anna's closest friend, Dominic Hall, Anna's classmate, Sam Green, Anna's soccer teammate, and Dr. Elsie Opal, which is Anna's professor. We also found that she was taking medication, which is an aspirin, for her headaches, and we also saw that she has a big bruise on her head. How did she get a bruise on her head? Well, based on Ana Garcia's story on Instagram, she got her bruise from her soccer practice. My head hurts so bad. You guys, I ran into this girl at soccer practice today, and look at that. Ugh. Huge bruise on my face right now. Do you have anyone that is most suspicious at the moment? And how did you guys find out who is the most suspicious? Running to from the crime scene to the people of interest, we have found that blood of the crime scene have no relation toward the people of interest because when we look at the cell electronic result test, we can see that the, the blood that is found at the crime scene is the same image as Anna, but the fingerprints that were found on the note have a relation toward one person, and that is Eric Penman. Region saying that he might have not done it. We still don't know who did it. Is there only Eric who is suspicious at the moment? Well, there's another person that is very suspicious and it was Dominic Cole. The reason for that is she lied on her lie detector test, but we still don't have any conclusive evidence that can determine who is at fault. What about the hair? Whose hair is it and is there any fingerprints on the flask? Based on our investigator, we have gathered all of the hair of the people of interest in Glory Fetco, which is Anna's dog. We used a microscope to see which hair was found at the crime scene, and it seemed that is Anna's hair. The flash that is found at the scene also has fingerprint, and it is also indeed Anna's. Okay, so based on the tests and evidence that you guys found at the crime scene, what is your guys' overall impression or explanation of what it might have happened? This was a very confusing case with many key details. We kept a good eye on Eric because he showed up on most of our evidence, including showing deception in the polygraph test and his fingerprint was on the note. The digital evidence confirms that they met for lunch the day before and stating they weren't on good terms. Eric was bothered by something and wanted to talk. He must have gotten her mad and apologized in messages. She didn't respond to any of them, although I don't think he murdered her. She didn't have any wounds or any marks on her, so there's no evidence that he murdered her. This needs some more investigation. And I also believe that Anna suffered from internal complication. This may include internal bleeding, a stroke, or cardiac arrest. Anna did have a huge bruise on her head that looks very unhealthy. She took some medicines and only applied ice to cure it. And there was a blood on the floor in which it was hers. She had no wounds, therefore it had come out from her mouth or nose. She definitely experienced some internal bleeding and that led to her death. Then what is your guys' next step? Gather major information already. However, we still have a lot to call. We are seeking to find Anna's time of death and what the cause of her death was. We have many predictions but no answer. A next step would be to perform an autopsy to determine the time of death and gather more information to determine if this was an accident or a homicide. 
Is there any additional information that you guys think is important to share with our commissioner or to our audience? To our commissioner, we hope you receive enough information. We are still in the process of gathering more. We are one step away from solving the Ana Garcia crime case. We hope your other case is just doing fine and I'll give you a call once I receive more information. All right, thank you, Officer Arando, Miss Nala, and Mr. Tyson for letting us interview you guys. And there you go, folks. Well, that's all I have to say. This is Haley D. Guzman, your news reporter. And Jacob, please take it away. Thank you, Haley. And that ends today's news. I'm Jacob Bernardo, and thank you for watching.